Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Consider again our Old Testament lesson, 1 Kings chapter 3. I'll read selected verses. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, Give to your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong for who is able to govern this great people of yours. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. Lord, sanctify us in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. My dear fellow classmates in my Savior's classroom, imagine if you had a blank check and the bottom, the name read God. You have an a signed check from God, and the line is blank, completely blank. And you can put anything in there that you want. God says, go ahead. Whatever it is, it's yours. What would you put in that line? Think about that for a moment. It could be anything, it, not just a dollar amount, not just a value. Anything that you want in all the world, it could be yours. Signed by God who can surely grant whatever it is that you ask. What you put on that line will certainly tell a lot about what are your priorities in life. So do you know what you would put? What do you think is the most important thing in all the world? The thing that you could benefit most from, or others perhaps could benefit most from. Solomon, in our text for today, had a blank check from God. Anything in all the world, God said to him, anything, ask it, and I'll give it to you. We see that Solomon's priorities, in our text for today at least, Solomon's priorities were spot on. He understood that godly wisdom was greater than worldly wealth, was greater than anything else in all the world. And so, in his request, he made that the number one priority for God to give him not only for himself, but also during his reign. And we see in his life and in his reign that God blessed him richly for that. Today, on this Christian Education Sunday, dear friends, let us make godly wisdom our priority as well, our number one priority, most important to us in all the world, godly wisdom. Make Christian education priority for you and also for your children this year and throughout your life. Godly wisdom is greater than worldly wealth. As I said, Solomon had his priorities straight. Before fame, before wealth, before prestige, before great success, he asked God for wisdom. Listen to his request again. Give to your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong for who is able to govern this great people of yours. What is wisdom? That's often what we say when we talk about Solomon. Solomon was the wisest person ever to live. He asked God for wisdom. What is it that he asked for? The text tells us it was a discerning heart to be able to know right from wrong as he judged. He was the king. He was to rule over all God's people. And he was told and commanded to judge between right and wrong. And so he asked God for discernment to discern what was right and wrong in each case. This is what we call wisdom. Kids, it's not just book smarts. It's not just knowing the right answer. It's not head knowledge. Wisdom is applying what you know to your situation in life. Wisdom is appropriately applying each truth to each case in life. That's what Solomon asked for. That is true wisdom, to be able to know what is right and what is wrong in each scenario based on what God says. Well, as we know Solomon's life, we know that God answered this request to him. Remember that matter that came to Solomon right after our text in chapter 4? Go back and read it if you need to be reminded. 
Two women came to Solomon, both of them mothers. One of the mothers had tragically rolled over her son the night before and killed it, and during the night switched the children so that the dead child was with the other mother. As the two mothers came to Solomon, they both said, This, the living one, is my son. How did Solomon wisely determine who was really the true mother of the living child? Well, you know it well. He said, well, I got a solution. We'll cut the child in two and give half to one mother and half to the other, and that will solve the dispute. And of course, the mother whose child, the living child was, said, no, no, let her have it. She can keep the child. She cared so much about the child, she wanted to keep it alive, even if she wouldn't have it. Solomon, in wisdom, determined that that was the true mother. That was the mother of the living child and granted her the the son back. God granted Solomon true wisdom in discerning what was right and wrong as he judged, took the knowledge that God had given him and applied it in his case as king. Somewhere along the line, we know that Solomon lost that wisdom, that godly judgment in his life At some point in his life, he got his priorities all mixed up. He failed to judge right and wrong, not only for his people, but even for himself. If you know the life of Solomon, you know that it was one that was marred with failures, with mistakes, with misapplications of God's truth. A thousand lovers, the sexual sins of Solomon were rampant. And if you look in the book of Ecclesiastes, he talks about his life, looking back at it. How many priorities he put ahead of God and his word and his will for Solomon's life. He tried the wealth. He tried the pleasure. He tried the popularity. He tried hard work. He thought, I'll just work as hard as I possibly can and then I'll be happy. And in the end, after every single priority that he tried, that he placed in front of God, he concluded it's all meaningless, it's all worthless. Solomon had gone way wrong so many times in his life as he was led from one bad decision in his life to the next. And yet by God's grace, he led him to a true understanding, a true godly wisdom in what was most important for his life. So that at the end of that book of Ecclesiastes, he was able to say, understanding God's grace, understanding God's forgiveness, everything is meaningless except this, to fear the Lord, to know what God has done for us, to know how he has washed all of our sins away, and then to take that knowledge and properly apply it to our lives. This, my dear friends, is the only thing that is not meaningless in this life. In fact, this is the only thing that gives meaning to everything else that we do in our lives. True godly wisdom. By God's grace, Solomon was led to understand it again. And we see that Solomon had that godly wisdom as well, even as he, before he even asked for it. Look at our text again. God granted him wisdom to ask for what was most important. He knew what God had done for him in the past. As he said, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David. He knew what God had promised. He knew what God had accomplished. And then he also applied that knowledge to his life in wisdom. He saw how that goodness applied to him. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. He was talking about himself. He was giving thanks to God for leading him to the throne. And then he showed humility as he asked his request in his position. You've made your servant king in, a place, in place of my father David, but I'm only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. True humility in the face of God, who alone can give true wisdom and true knowledge and understanding. And he also recognized the great task that God had given in his request. He said, Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. That information could only be known to Solomon by a careful study of God's word and promises. 
Such knowledge would not be known to Solomon unless he knew his Bible history well, to know that God was the one who had chosen his children Israel and called him to lead that people. Solomon knew these things because godly wisdom was a priority for him in his life. To know his God was important. To know what his God had done for him was important. To know what God would do through him for his chosen people was important for Solomon. My dear friends, how are your priorities? Are your priorities straight as well? Have you asked God for wisdom in understanding what is right and wrong in the decisions that you make in life? This is an important thing for us to ask for every day of our lives because we live in a world that tells us that there is no right and wrong. We live in a world that tells us now that there is no absolute truth. And my dear friends, this is a lie. There is absolute truth. The wisdom of this world has led us to the high knowledge that biblical interpretation is whatever you want it to be. That the higher critical of method says that whatever scripture says, this is truth for you. There is no absolute truth anymore. There is no absolute right and wrong. There is no clear voice. It's only a thousand shades of gray. My dear friends, nothing can be further from the truth. There is right and wrong. There is absolute truth, and it's what God has told us in his word. May God give us a desire to seek out that truth in our lives, to seek out godly wisdom, not only to know what God has done and what God has told for us to us, but also a willingness to apply that to our lives. I can't tell you the number of times that I've had parents come back to me, come back to church because they tell me they've wanted Christian education for their kids. And this is a wonderful thing. And we rejoice every time it happens. Praise God that he inspires parents to see that great priority for their children. But my question is, where was that priority for them for those two, three, four years or, or longer when they were missing and absent? Where was that priority? Where is that priority for them now? Not just for their children, but for them. To be guided by God and his word? To understand right and wrong and to properly apply it? How can we as parents, as adults in this world, honestly make wise decisions in our lives if we ourselves are not guided by God's truth. Consider the decisions that you as a parent make compared to the decisions that your children perhaps are faced with in life. What great responsibility that is. It is a priority, the greatest priority for you to make godly wisdom the most important thing. But what about for our children also? Do we seek for our children good schools? Or do we rather seek approval from men, from the world's wisdom and the world's knowledge? As we seek out the schools that have accreditation, we seek out the schools that give the higher degree, the better degrees. Do we seek those things that are most important, the subjects that are most pertinent? Or do we turn to the world's wisdom, even for guidance in these areas? My dear friends, may we have godly wisdom as we decide what is best for ourselves and for our children to know God's works for us, to know that he has redeemed us by his blood shed on the cross, to know that he has laid out an absolute truth and what a great thing that it is to admit that we have sinned instead of excusing it or saying that God just lets it go. No, he doesn't let it go. He punished it in his son, Jesus Christ. And he washed away every single one of those sins. And then to apply that knowledge properly, not as a license to do whatever we want, but in wisdom, to take that forgiveness and with joy to say, 
God, guide me to do what you want in my life. Make me wise in the decisions that I make. Not because I'm going to earn something for you, but because you have already given me everything. So when you choose what, child, what school your child will, will go to, don't consider what extracurriculars they offer. Don't make the deciding factor what diploma they'll have in their hand at the end. Don't send them to a school with the best basketball program, with the strongest science department, or the greatest academic achievers. Send them to a school that will allow them to sit at the feet of the greatest teacher who has ever been. Let them sit at the feet of God and learn from him. Let them learn of God's love, his compassion, his forgiveness, his will. Then you'll be making a wise decision. What about you parents who are sitting there who have already made this decision for your kids? Who already send your children to a Christian day school? Praise God for that. This is a wonderful thing. But are you sometimes tempted to say, kids, I get that five days a week in school. Why would I need to go to Sunday school on Sunday? Or seminary students, I go to chapel every day during the school week. Why would I need to go to church on Sunday? Or you parents who are here today, perhaps you're thinking, I'll come today, it's a special Sunday, it's a Christian education Sunday, but, but next week there's a lot of things going on. There's more important things to do, or there are very important things, and I can always come back next week. The Word of God will be there again. Do we sometimes think that God's Word is important, but not so important that I can't wait later? Do I sometimes think that I've got enough of God's Word that I can put something else ahead of it just this time? My dear friends, this is not a question of how much is enough. This is a question of priorities. This is a question of what is most important, what is of most value. This is a question of what trumps all other concerns. And parents, consider this. Your children are paying attention to the decision that you make. If you say, well, this weekend we have a really important soccer tournament for the kids, and I can go to church the next week, or I can go on Monday night, and so I'm going to decide to go to the soccer tournament this weekend and then perhaps get God's word later. Your children are taking note of that. And have you then taught them by that decision that there is something more important? Or there is something that can take prominence and the word of God can be put on the side? Lord, lead us to godly wisdom in the decisions that we make in our lives. This morning we had the opportunity earlier to open our Sunday school year. There were many faces there, and what a joy that is. Children sitting at the feet of God to hear the word. But there were many faces that were missing. Lord, God, grant us godly wisdom to never say that I have learned enough, but to teach our children from such a young age what really is right and wrong, what really is most important in our lives, what really is the greatest priority of all. Lord, help us to teach our children godly wisdom. And then, Lord, help us to seek that godly wisdom in our own lives as well. And as you bring your children to Sunday school, enroll in a Bible class as well. We teach that Bible class there at the same time. Or if you're not in that one, we have a Bible class on Wednesday morning, another Bible class, two Bible classes on Wednesday evening. Study God's word. And don't just let it be good enough to meet with fellow Christians. Study his word at home as well. That family altar where you with your children show them what is most important in your life. After a long day of busy work and important work oftentimes, help them to see what is most important of all, without which all of the things that you did throughout the day are absolutely, utterly meaningless. Lord, grant us godly wisdom. 
Bless us. Bless our families. Bless our children. And bless us all as we seek this most important priority in life, godly wisdom. Amen. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen.